Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Martha, Martha. In the tone of Jesus in response to Martha's request, we see uh, tenderness on the side of the Lord. Tenderness. That's why he mentions the name twice. Martha, Martha. He knows her very well. In another passage, he tells us that he's friends with Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus, who does not appear on this scene. But we remember when Lazarus died and Jesus was notified before entering the, 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 the Bethany, Martha went to meet the Lord at the entrance and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It is the same Martha that brings the questions. And Jesus knows Martha very well. How she is anxious and worried about many things. In the centuries, the church has interpreted this passage in many ways, but it always puts an emphasis on these two realities that happen with Martha. Sometimes we think that the, what happened is that she was burdened with all the serving. We can reflect a little bit about that. Obviously, the Gospel says that Martha welcomed him and everyone that came with Jesus. Jesus didn't travel alone. Not only the twelve were with him, but then the disciples were also with him. And at times there were hundreds of people following Jesus. So when Martha welcomes Jesus, there is an attitude of opening and wanting to serve the Lord. Wanted to serve him. St. Augustine reflecting on this passage, he says, Martha was trying to feed the Lord. And Jesus was trying to feed with his word. What happened with Martha is that she, she will not allow herself to be fed by the Lord, by the Word of God. She was only anxious about the serving, about giving to the Lord, but not about receiving from the Lord. Anxious and worried. We use those words commonly when we speak in our language, but in the scriptures they show a different connotation. Anxious and worried, they can actually be interchangeably. But in the scripture that we see today, we see the anxiety part and the worry as one. And the second one, translated as worry, is actually anger. You were distressed. So uh, another translation would be, you're anxious and angry about many things. Imagine the scene. Martha welcomed everyone and she had an expectation that this is going to be a good event. But then anxiety creeps in, and then from the anxiety comes anger. Martha was throwing a tantrum. That's what the gospel tells us. So when he comes to the Lord, he comes with a request to him. And in the request, one can sense pride. Why? Because he tries to read the mind of Jesus. You do not care. You do not care. See, what was welcoming at the beginning of the passage turned later into uh, being worried about the serving 
that she forgot who she was serving, the details of serving, making sure that everything is all right. Everything should be the way I imagined it to be. That's where pride kicks in. We forget whose work is this and what the purpose of it is. Imagine you go to a dinner, a nice dinner, and the guest and the host, I'm sorry, forgets to serve the dinner. You know, it's happened to me that sometimes I may invite people over and then we're talking and all of a sudden the time for dinner passed and we forgot to serve the dinner. But we just forget about it. It feels like it, there is something missing in the, in the event. Why? Because there were other things that were needed to be attended to, perhaps listening and talking with each other. But Mary was not. She wanted to make sure that they got the food, that everything was done properly. So in Martha, we see a certain bossiness, a certain desire. Her anxiety and her anger had turned into desire to control, into the need to tell others what they're supposed to do. Do you not care that my sister has led me by myself to do the serving? See, there is a, a certain pride in that connotation because we're trying to say what Jesus should be caring about. You shouldn't be worried about the Word of God. You should make sure that the food is served according to the specifications that I set out to be served. See, Martha began to think that the work was hers and that she was in charge. That's the problem with Martha. And I think it's, it's, it simplifies, since the time of Augustine, this passage has been interpreted to simplify the, the overactivity that we can enter into the life of the church versus the contemplative side. Both need to be part of the life of, of the church. The church is to be active without losing its contemplative side, listening to the Word of God. Otherwise, we begin to think that this whole thing is ours, and is our making, and this is our kingdom, and this is our working. We are indispensable. We're needed. To solve other people's problems, I'm here to solve their issues. We're anxious and worried about many things, and they're two different things. Anxiety comes from within the heart. Comes from within the heart. Most of the times, the things that we make up ourselves. Doctors agree with that. Anxiety, as a disorder, it causes people to try to uh, be so fearful of the possibilities of not being in control that anxiety becomes a response in trying to control the environment around you. To soothe, your, to soothe you, it would be. So anxiety has this controlling component that tries to basically secure safety for the self. That's the problem with anxiety. Many people suffer from anxiety today. Many people in our society, because of perhaps the busyness of our lives, we suffer from anxiety precisely because uh, we feel that we have to control the world out there. Some psychologists think that anxiety is caused because we were not cared for when we were children. And now we've got to make sure that we care ourselves for it. And that other people do as we need to so that I can feel safe. It's a very self-centered illness. Eventually, in extremes, it can detach people from reality and from people themselves to allow themselves to be loved by others. The second one, worry, or more precise, anger, is because of things that are out there, that are out of my control. War, earthquakes, the weather, especially here the weather, it's hot. We worry about this, and that causes us to worry. None of those things are, in, are we in charge. Jesus, when he uses this word again, about anxious, do not be anxious about anything, Jesus says in the same gospel later on. Do not worry as to what you're going to eat, or what you're going to uh, wear, or what you're going to drink. The Lord is the one who provides. God is the one who's in charge, and God is the one who provides for us. So what happens? Tell her to help me. There is the bossiness again. Tell her to help me. 
I think it's important for people, or for all of us, as we see ourselves in the worries and the anxieties of every day, to be aware what anxiety and fear do to us and anger do to us. Turns us inward. And then like a vacuum, we want everything to be the way we want it to be. To tell the master of masters what to do. Tell her to help me. We go to that extent. Even asking God himself to tell us what things should happen. It can creep into our prayer as well. That's why discernment is so important and contemplation is so important. Because it can creep into ourselves to the point that we turn it into a prayer. Lord, fix this for me. Change this for me. Change so and so for me. Change my children that they may be, I don't know, change my husband, my wife, to be more like I desire them to be. Those are the effects of this attitude of thinking that we own everything. Contemplation, on the other hand, Mary, she sat by the, beside the Lord at his feet and listened to him speak. It's another part of, of uh, hospitality. Don't separate. Martha was busy with the food and all that. But again, if you have a guest, while you're cooking and everything else, we're going to leave him by himself. He needs somebody to keep him company. Especially the Lord, the guest of guests. He needed someone and he needed people that he was speaking and he was bringing his word. And Mary just sat there. Some uh, fathers of the church describe Mary as Mary Magdalene. The Mary on this scene. The one whom Jesus had healed. So one, it would make sense in that interpretation that Mary came understanding being healed already from the worries and anxieties of life. That she can just needed to contemplate the Lord and nothing else. She shows the better part. Yeah. In Martha's perspective, it's not fair. She shows the better part. In the meantime, I'm stuck in the kitchen. But no. That is necessary when Martha is doing. But the change of attitude became the problem. So Mary said beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. And that is what contemplation is. Contemplation is not... To extract ourselves from the world, but is to take a passive role in it. To tackle that control freakness in each one of us. To let the Lord be Lord, to let God be God, and let things happen. Often when I'm giving counsel to people, I'm speaking and I say something that I heard many years, I, I don't invent new things, I usually just pleasurize them. Ideas, that is. Stay with it. I'm angry with my wife because she did this and she did that. And, uh, can you stay with it? Can you stay just without having to do a big fuss about it? With a tone of tantrum to tell him how things should be. I'm angry with my husband because he did this and this and that. Can you just stay with it? Or do you feel that you have to go and tell him, do what I tell you. See? Can you just stay with it? Can you present the anguish of not being able to say what you want to say into your prayer? Can you absorb all this energy of anxiety and worry and stop from talking and just stay with it? And bring that into your prayer life. Say, Lord, I'm prideful. In order to release my anxiety, I want to control the world and the people around me. That should become the object of our prayer. That is contemplation. The ability to speak to God in that way and bring to Him the worries and the troubles of the heart. That is what we should be praying about. Instead of going to the Lord and telling Him, Lord, fix this, this and that in my life. Lord, help me. Because without You... I cannot contain myself. And my pride wants to rule the world around me. That is contemplation. The ability to see the world and realize it's not mine. God made it. And when He made it, He made it beautiful. So we ask the Lord to heal us. In the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
And the Blessed Virgin Mary had this passivity in her, in her reality. That she kept all these things in her heart, he says. That's what brought her peace. That she was not trying to control everyone. But just saying, let it be according to your word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.